Chapter 3 It was close to 4.30 in the morning when Chris got back to the Cheater 5, and he was halfway up the steps to his apartment when he noticed a lone figure by the pool, looking like a shadow, under one of the patio umbrellas, but definitely a human, and he thought about it, hesitated, thought about it again, and decided you better at least unobtrusively make sure someone's okay. And he went back down and tapped on the gate, and the person looks over, and it's Marlene. What the heck? Chris said. Oh, hi, she said. Her voice box quality wasn't the greatest. Understandable for the middle of the night, but even so... So Chris let himself in and sat down with her. She was an attractive woman, no doubt, even here with baggy workout clothes and a hoodie thing covering her head. In fact, you might as well ask. So he said, let me guess, you can't sleep, so you're starting your day a little early, going for a jog. Marlene tried to manage a limp smile, it's not that simple, she said. If it were the middle of the day, he probably wouldn't have. But at this hour, it was more anything goes. So he took her hand to see what would happen. And she got up and came sideways and sat on his lap. Now that's a first, he said. You're silly, she said, lightening up just a touch. I've done it before. Chris tried but couldn't come up with it. Really? You better refresh me. He couldn't see her eyes very well, but Chris assumed she was rolling them at him. She said, The Country Music Award Show? You made me watch it. It was awful. I climbed on you. That sort of saved it. Man, Chris said, you got me there. I don't typically like country music. A little bluegrass now and then, and the traditional guys, fine. The Merle Haggards, the Lefty Frizzells, the Bob Willses. This was the modern stuff, Marlene said. And, Chris said, you climbed on me? I mean, like, fully clothed or different? Different, she said, and it was a bit of a purr, which you had to admit was never the worst utterance. Welp. He said, all interesting, even if you might have me mixed up with someone else. Meanwhile, she was, of course, sitting on him currently, not stripped down or anything, but he couldn't help imagine it. And he said, maybe they should go upstairs at that, since you never know what might be on TV at this hour. Marlene had a funny look now and was likely starting to get some clarity. And she said, Chris, I'm very sorry. This is hugely embarrassing. I don't normally get confused like this. Don't mention it, he said. We're all humans here. Jeez. And without thinking about it much more, she got off his lap and followed him up there, and they headed straight back. No issues. Chris deciding along the way that this may be a world record for him in the ease of pursuit of an accomplishment category. A half hour later, lifting up onto an elbow, Marlene said, I needed that so bad. Thank you, you mean, Chris said, and she looked at him funny, and Chris said he was kidding, for gosh sakes. You say that, she said, but I can tell you do want to be thanked. Fine, if you put a gun to my head, he said, I wouldn't mind. Really, she said, raising up more now. This is interesting. Did you not enjoy yourself? I did. And did I not express myself? Well, you said you needed that. No reference to the interlocking counterpart, really. You're a nutcase, she said. I don't mean it necessarily negatively. She started stroking the back of his neck, so there were no hurt feelings, apparently, but dang. Hopefully, she wasn't initiating a round two, since there'd be no way tonight on his end, 
and he was happy just to have around one, since he couldn't even remember the last time. Oh yeah, Rosie probably, but that may not have counted. Chris said, I'm going to fire a question at you, and you can give it to me straight. Man to man, so to speak. Is my unit smaller in your estimation? Marlene laughed, kind of a hoot, a little over the top, which Chris hadn't expected. Compared to whose, she said, quite a grin on her face now. He hadn't thought of that. He wouldn't mind, actually, hearing how he stacked up compared to others. Maybe, though maybe not. But that was beside the point. Compared to mine, he said, from before. It's fine. Don't worry about it, she said. Chris said that wasn't my question, and I wasn't worrying exactly. I was just asking. Though that was the point. He was concerned. She laughed again and stuck up her index fingers and put them a certain distance apart, and Chris didn't know if she was making fun of him or not, and she said, as I alluded to, it worked. And that was all you were going to get on the subject, at least right now, and Chris couldn't help trying to think back. Was he before that she referenced, prior to his experience in the Strand House, or after? That could make a big difference. The prior to period, him feeling free and easy and reasonably confident all around in this area, as contrasted with the post-Strand House era, where he was weighed down by intimidation. And God dang it, he was still psyching himself out. He'd even tried to introduce the subject with Dr. Moore, but she didn't take the bait and try to help him, did she? Did she? She used it as a springboard to ask about his relationship with his mother. Or maybe that was something different. But either way, the session didn't help. And admittedly, he should have directed her to the unit issue better. On the other hand, come on, like Marlene inferred, things worked out okay tonight or this morning. So why continually beat yourself up? It's not all about you, though, Marlene was saying, a bit more grim, unfortunately. And Chris said she was kind of reading his mind and sorry about that. That's okay, she said. Shall I put up some coffee? Gee, if you need to, I was more thinking I'd hit the hay for a while. But I forgot, you have to work. Today's Saturday, she said. What were the police doing here, by the way, those couple of times? Whoa. Chris was thinking. You saw all that, he said? Everyone did. Are you kidding? Chris hadn't considered it that way, which was stupid, or he had blinders on. It would be hard not to be aware of what was going on in the rest of the Cheater Five, especially out in the open. He was trying to remember, did he bring Kay over here too? Was he going to get grilled about that? He said... The police were looking for Ken. It's all straightened out. Ah, she said, that I did know. I was simply wondering, those couple of occasions, if it had anything to do with you. Letting that baby hang, maybe playing with him, but maybe not. Gee, what a possible cross-examination suddenly. Had he left something on the table, so to speak, that she was aware of? This was a concern from way back during the early days of his diagnosis and his list that he may have been calling out items in his sleep. Whatever. It was clear Marlene was somewhat in the loop if she had everything straight on Kenny. And you weren't going to tr try to pry into that. Though it did make you wonder. He did remember that time in the crow's nest following the group trek to the tennis tournament at Indian Wells when Marlene and Cindy the waitress seemed to be cozying up pretty tight. And you might not think much of it except Marlene had mentioned, or at least implied, her bisexuality element more than once. And that part Chris was fine with and even intrigued by. But bottom line, Cindy would have the inside scoop. And again, none of his business... Except why did Marlene bring up the cops looking for him out of thin air? 
Could they have stopped by and talked to her when he was on hiatus in Eclipse, Arizona? He said, you know something I don't. I'm always game to hear it. And she changed the subject. So you moved on. She was looking now for a sugar substitute, reminding him he had one of those before and asking where he kept it. And Chris said, try the right cabinet on top. And she got a chair and reached up and found it by looking around. And Chris, for whatever reason, hadn't focused on the fact that she was doing it all completely nude. Will I get slapped if I make an understandable hormonally charged comment? He said. What? She said, holding her position for a moment and looking down at him, waiting. Well, what are you, about 31, 32? She looked at him like he was an idiot and put one hand on her hip. 37, she said, and? He figured she was about that age. Maybe she even told him once. But try to butter her up at least, which might not be working. He said, okay, the risky comment. You really don't have any cellulite, like zero, that I'm noticing. Thank you, she said, I guess. And she came down with the sugar substitute and started pouring the water through the grounds. He said, I mean, I'm enjoying it. Don't get me wrong. But do you typically parade around like this? She said, when I feel like it and I'm not cold. You've never seen a woman natural and at ease in her own house? That would be highly surprising. Given, given the premium you seem to put on entertainment value. Chris said, I never really asked you, but do you work out consistently? I was kidding you earlier about taking a jog, but dang. Well, I do have finished roots on my mother's side, she said. Chris, figuring she's coming around a little bit now, explaining why everything still is pretty darn tight. Tremendous work ethic in Finland, he said. Plus, they're always jumping on skis for transportation. Snowshoes, too, she said, smiling again just a little more, bringing the two coffee to the tables by the couch, and this time, son of a bitch, climbing onto his lap the way she mistakenly referenced it during the Country Music Awards show. What could you do? Chris said, a little quieter, I couldn't help it. I was comparing you to the one other time that did happen in my kitchen. Not here, a different one. I go out for an early morning walk, pick up some pastries, and someone who had stayed over, who I thought was still sleeping, is in the kitchen, similarly reaching for a cup, and also dressed the same. She was nude? Marlene said, well, yeah, which you just pointed out is no big deal. Well, did anyone see? I was a little concerned about that myself, Chris said, since it was daylight, sunshine flooding in. She assured me that I was over worrying that she'd close the shades. Had she? I guess. I mean, was she nude when she closed them? That occurred to me. I didn't ask her. How old was this person? Marlene said. Mid-twenties, I think. Gosh, she said. Chris said, What are you doing now? You sure? Most definitely, she said. A distinct slur to the words now. Chris thinking, Holy moly, I brought this on myself. Describe this person, Marlene continued, slurring worse, and Chris did his best. And this would have been that time on Broderick Street with Allison, of course. And he threw in that even being a full decade younger than Marlene, she may not have been as fit as Marlene, which wasn't necessarily true, but it apparently did the trick here and continued to fuel the fire. Eventually, they got around to the coffee. And Marlene took a shower and did put something on this time, a robe out of Chris's closet, and Chris said, let's back it up now, if we may. My bad for not addressing this until now. 
Why were you huddling by the pool at 4.30 in the morning? I lost my job, she said. Okay, he said, but gee, I mean, that spells the end of the world. And what job? I didn't even know you found one. And he kind of regretted that remark, since when she first moved in to A3 downstairs, she told him she was looking for a teaching job, and he even gave her a couple suggestions. These last few months, they weren't hanging out fine, but he should have at least been interested how that was stuff was coming. Shouldn't he have? She said, It's a pattern, I'm afraid. Give me something here, Chris said. You mean you just keep getting canned? She nodded. He said, It's starting to come back to me to prove I do pay attention sometimes. Didn't you say your last teaching job that propelled you out here was in Saginaw, Wisconsin? Appleton, she said. Saginaw's in Michigan but thank you for paying attention. Fine. Seems harder to get fired back here for some reason. Maybe I'm off. What did you do? I had an on-site relationship with a student. Chris's eyes got big and she had his full attention now. You gotta know, he said, something like that around here, probably anywhere. You could go to jail. Marlene waved her hand. Not that kind of a relationship for crying out loud. All it was, there was a young man in my fourth period class. He was struggling terribly with math. My fear was he'd be held back, forced to repeat the year. I offered to come over on Sundays and tutor him, and his mom and stepdad were thrilled. Chris said, in that case, seems reasonable enough, probably. The student improved dramatically, and he won a math award at the final spring assembly. Unfortunately, some complaints trickled in that I was favoring one pupil over the rest of the class. Ooh, Chris said. So they let you go? That is pretty cold-blooded, yeah. They didn't let me go, but they didn't retain me for the next term. Same difference. But, Chris said, advancing to your deal out here, same kind of thing? Sort of. I wasn't accused of favoring a student this time, but again, complaints from parents did me in. They didn't appreciate it that I was discussing the N-word. Chris didn't like hearing this either. So why were you? You couldn't educate today's youth without bringing that to the table? Chris, this is middle school now. These are eighth graders. Social studies. The N-word is a significant part of our cultural climate. To sweep it under the rug would be irresponsible. And she gave him a look like, what's the matter with him? When all Chris was thinking was, play the game just a little for goodness sakes, even if it means fine, not upsetting the apple cart. That's so difficult. Where is this joint, he asked. The school? It's in Sigma Beach, she said. Wow, that's all the way up past Malibu, right? I know where you're going, she said, the traffic. How do I handle it, or how did I? You have a one-track mind when it comes to Southern California transportation. What I was going to ask, Chris said, that sounds like a pretty liberal area, no? Big money, the movies, celebrities, and all that? It is, she said, but parents complain everywhere these days. Chris had to agree. She had that part right, unfortunately. But the administration, they caved in just like that? They did, she said. The principal, uh-huh. That was the end of the month before spring break. Now I've got a mark on my record and my employment prospects for the fall are null and void. So yes, you caught me by the pool in a reflective moment. Chris processed it. He said, tell you what, let's go for a walk. And Marlene got up and said she'd take a rain check. And there was a little peck on the cheek, but she wrapped things up in about 30 seconds and was out the door. Man, Chris was thinking, there was always one more thing on your plate, wasn't there?